Hey folks, I'm Rob. And I'm Nathan. And we are Two, Two Guys, Guys in a Ride. Ride. Today we're excited to bring you another virtual car show featuring the garages, collections, and owners out at the Chanhassen Autoplex. The Chanhassen Autoplex features a monthly summer car show the last Saturday of every month from April through September. Unfortunately, due to current circumstances, the May in-person car show has been canceled. Well, that's where we come in. The good folks over at the Autoplex invited us to film several garages and see the collections and meet the owners. That's where we're headed right now. But before we do, every month the Autoplex gives back to a different charity. And this month's charity recipient is Happy Tales Rescue of Minnesota. Happy Tales is a nonprofit organization dedicated to rescuing homeless and abandoned animals. By working with committed volunteers, foster homes, local veterinarians, trainers, and boarding facilities, they are able to rescue dogs and cats, providing them with loving temporary care until a well-matched and carefully screened forever home can be found. So please consider making a donation at talesrescue.org. Also, give us a like and click on the subscribe button down below and ring the bell notification so you never miss a video. That's right, so what do you say, Nate? Oh, let's, let's go, go for a ride. ride. Hi folks, this is Nathan with Two Guys in a Ride, and today again we're out here at the Chanhassen Autoplex bringing you some virtual garage tours. If you haven't seen the first nine videos, you can click on the link above and check those out. And uh, I don't know what number this will be in the series that we're doing today, but we have a whole bunch more coming for you. Uh, so today I'm out here with Rich. Rich uh, has this garage out here. And thank you, Rich, for letting us come in and do a, a story on your garage. Thank you. All right. So now um, we're going to. You, you, you are a fan of, of AMX. And so that stood for what? American Moser Experimental. Okay. And you've got. Tell us about the two cars that you have right here. So the two that we have right here, the one on the top is a 79. American Motors AMX. That's uh, basically the last in the line of the AMX brand. Um, there they, was made, one, they made them one year one past year. that, but not with the V8. Right, it has had a six in it. That um, had to, this, this thing really has to go. I mean, it, there can't be that much weight. It to does it. really go. And that one actually came with a uh, 301 in it, okay. but uh, the person that restored it before me wedged in a 360. So, oh, so it does really go. Yeah. <laughs> it really goes. And then what's what's this one down here? The one on the bottom is a 1968 AMX. This is the first year of the AMX. The AMX was built to uh, compete with the Camaro and the Mustang during the mid-60s. Okay. And that was since uh, AMC was striving to get into the market. Mm -hmm. um, they were more known for the big cars, the Ambassadors, the the uh, and those type of things. Um, they wanted to get in the sports car market and okay. that was their entry into it. So 1968, 69, and 70 was the two-seater experimental. Okay, so you know uh, just a little bit of history and correct me if I'm wrong, but you know uh, American uh, Motors Company, which was AMC, the American Motors Exper Experimental was, that's th these are the cars that they kind of tried out but they did them in a fashion that either they could produce them a little bit, not just one or two or three of them? They wanted to, right, they wanted to make it more wide, but they really wanted to get into the race market. Okay. So they had the bigger, since Nash and, and Hudson merged together to make American Motors, they had the larger vehicles. So they wanted to get to the smaller car market and into the sports car market because muscle cars were becoming more right. popular. And Mopar had the bigger, bigger um, sports cars. That's when the Camaro and the Mustang came out. So they wanted to compete with that in the thing. So they had the designers design a car that would kind of compete with that and did because on the Trans Am market it really set some speed records that still stand today. Wow. So tell us about the uh, motor that's in this one. In this one, it has a 390. It came with three different options in it, but this one actually has the 390. There was a 401 that AMC made as well. Yeah. was not an option in this one. This 390 was the biggest that they could get okay. in this one. Now, um, your garage, it, it's fun to step in a different garage because they're all unique. 
Okay, so in this one now, um, this is probably the smallest garage that we've This made. is a budget garage. This is a, what you call it, all right, a budget garage. But yet, you've got two, the, the amount of stuff you have in here is, is amazing. It's monumental. Well, it is. <laughs> um, and so, you know, you've got a lift, um, and I'm, I'm assuming that's electrically, uh, hydraulically powered? Correct. Okay, um, and then does it heat it in here? It is heated, in floor heat. In floor heat, and then I, I really like your, your pot machine. You know, that, that's, you know, true vintage there. And it actually works, doesn't it? It actually works, and that was actually built by Rockola, who made jukeboxes. And oh. this is one of the... So it plays music while you get pop. <laughs> it's one of the, it's unique because it actually shows the cans that are in there. And even we've had actually guys come out here that work on vending machines that say that's a, that's a dinosaur, but it's still in working. But still, it's, it's still, still working. Works. Condition. Yeah, a yep. tribute to a craftsmanship. Yep. So, um... Up on the wall here, you've got a whole collection of cars. Yes. Uh, now, were these things that, that you bought? And, oh my gosh, they're still in boxes. Uh, so, did you collect these? Or are these gifts? You know, there's different size ones. There's. Tell us about these a little bit. I had collected them over the years, some of them. Okay. Um, but I came across a collector that uh, was kind of uh, changing interest. He was an AMC enthusiast, but he was changing interest. So, he was getting rid of this, and I bought it from him. So it felt it, it fell really nice into here because when the kids come out for the car shows, that's what they get drawn to. That that brings dad into the garage with the kid because they can see the cars. Oh, that's neat. Now, right next to the cars, you have what looks to be an authentic street light. It is. Like not a reproduction. Now no. um, I haven't said this yet, we're gonna get to this, minute, but but you are a former police officer. Correct. Uh, and thank you for your service. And also a former firefighter. Yes. Thank you for your service there too. Thank you. Um, so, what, um, I, I know I hate to ask how you I came upon this, getting this real one, because everything we see in the, in the garage has been fake so far. Yeah. So is this one you actually backed into in your last day of work and you said, <laughs> shoot, it's direct, I gotta take it or what? No, actually you can find those a dime a dozen on, uh, on Craigslist and that's oh, where hey. I found them. Okay. So cities, you know, cities use them up and they sell them, you know, when they change oh, out sure. lights. It's just uh, extra equipment that they have on hand. So they auction them off and sell them off and that's basically what I did and I went on eBay and they actually have controllers that control the electronics mm -hmm. on it. So it will change that's, the lights. That's really cool. I, mean, I don't think I've, every, everyone I've seen so far has been an aftermarket sold that's an authentic that well that was a real street light that's authentic and that's heavy as can be oh i bet you it is <laughs> now up on the wall here of course we've got some pictures um of of some of the uh, awards you've gotten mm -hmm. uh you were a canine officer at one point yep at one point mm -hmm. okay uh and above that there's a picture but that's not you that's not me it's a little old to be that's you a little old yep so tell us what that what's the significance of that picture. So that came one the reason that I became a police officer. One of the big influencers I had was Adam Twelve. Okay. And Adam Twelve went through a number of generations of vehicles, and one of them that they used was the early '70s Matador, and really put me MC on the map when they did that. And uh, that that vehicle had a 401 in it. It was okay. just a monster of a police car, uh, and I really always liked that that end of things. Um, I restored a couple police cars over the years. Uh, the department that I worked for, I had a 1978 Dodge Monaco Interceptor mm -hmm. that I uh, rebuilt and used as a public relations tool for the yep. department. And that was really kind of interesting because you actually would have people that would never approach a police officer and didn't like police officers. But when you talk cars, they do everything. So that we would park the old one next to yeah. the new one and they would come over and start having conversations with you. Yeah. So that was a great influence. But I've always wanted to get one of those and restore ah, it to the LAPD. So this may be the things. next purchase then. It may be the next purchase, but they are very expensive when you can find when, them. When you, when yeah. you can find them, right? because right? they're rare. Well, because a lot of them, Hollywood crashed a lot of them. So when they were oh, taken sure. out of police service, the Dukes yep. of Hazard and that type yep. of thing, they cracked them all up. So they're very hard so to find. So they're hard to find because it's rare. Right. <laughs> all right, and now, um, you have got some paintings up here, and uh, so can you tell us a little bit about these? 
So uh, Dave Schneider was one that uh, did the original three on the top, okay. and uh, they feature AMC's. He kind of does it in a in a realm that whatever car you like or collect, right. he can make a, a mural of okay. that end of things, and has a lot of them out there. So I grabbed those three out there. Um, they're they're vintage. A lot of these are not available anymore. That you can find some of them you can, but mm -hmm. I think the one on the far right over there is pretty rare one um, that you can't really find anymore. The ones on the bottom are just other makers or another uh, artist that came up with uh, an AMC thing. So, But these were all ones that were used in <clears throat> movies. Movies, right? yeah. So growing up, I liked the chase movies. Mm -hmm. So when you look through this mural, you can actually see the cars from Vanishing Point and um, Gone in 60 Seconds and uh, Bullet. Um, it's just really fun to, to look at the picture and pick them out. Hey, now you've got obviously some... Uh, I got a firefighter hat. Is this was this your hat? That's the hat. The, uh, that's a helmet that I wore when I was. Okay, and then over here you got a, a police cap. Yep. Our police hat. Yeah, it was my garrison cap. And then uh, you got a f fire and a canine unit license plate. Yep. Um, I mean, it's, it's just it's so fun to see how people decorate. I mean, it doesn't matter the size. Doesn't matter, you know, just putting your personal touch on it. It's just it's just it's really neat. That's half the fun because the cars are the one end of things, but a lot of the stuff that you see, a lot of the paraphernalia that you see, the little kish things. Um, it's fun to go out and and collect those from when dealerships were out there and, and what you could get when you went into the dealership and those type of things. Tell me about this uh, little toolbox here. That was a toolbox I think I got for Christmas one one year from my son. And it's the, the picture above it. Yeah. It's a form of that that they use to make the stickers to put on the toolbox. <laughs> it's kind of a fun thing. I love it. And uh, you, you obviously have some working materials down here. You got your, some of your tools over there, your air compressor and that kind of stuff. Yep. And then you've got uh, well, a lot of service manuals. Service manuals. Uh, there's actually AMC sent out these to their de dealerships for uh, marketing. Okay. So there's a lot of those different type of things, the giveaways that they had, the paint touch-ups. Paint touch-ups, I love that. I don't think you'd want to try to use that paint now. You don't want to try, no. Uh, if no, you no, can no. get the cover open. But All right, now you've got one more car, uh, Rich, that we want to take a look at. That's actually a, a state patrol car. Minnesota state patrol car. Minnesota state patrol car that you have uh, redone. Uh, so let's, let's go ahead and take a look at okay. it here. Now this is obviously, an, uh, I, I would say, an 89 body at least for a Mustang. I know that because I, I had one. Uh, so, But this has got a, a special package on it because it had like the police package on there. Correct. This is a 1989 Ford Mustang LX luxury package um, SSP which stands, stands for a special service package. Mm -hmm. It's a fox body so yeah. if anybody's out there wondering what kind of body shape it is it's actually the fox body. Okay and and what did the what did the special police package include? Included a number of things like larger wheels, larger tires, uh, coolers for the transmission as well as heavier duty radiator uh, cooling, okay. um, silicone radiator hoses as well as uh, a bigger rear end, heavier okay. duty rear end, and a lot of the heavier duty electronics. So it had a 140 amp uh, alternator on it okay. to, to run all the equipment that was demanded sure. for it. Sure, And now, um, when, when you purchased this to, 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 to finish restoring it, um, it, it had, I mean, it had been restored. I mean, there was equipment in there, but tell us a little bit about that process and what you changed. So when the State Patrol sold it uh, initially at auction, which they do with all their cars when they use up service. Yeah. So this is in service for four years with the San Jose State Patrol. And when they sold it at auction, it was bought by the first owners that wanted to make a drag racing car out of it, which they did with a lot of the 5.0 yeah. Mustangs. And they second guessed that and didn't want to do that. So they kept it the way it is. They owned it for about 10, 15 years and sold it to a number of different people after that. Fifth owner of it um, restored Mustang SSPs that he purchased to those departments that worked on, uh, okay. on the street. He got the Minnesota State Patrol and he put era correct stuff in it due to his research, but it wasn't correct to the equipment that the State Patrol used. So as we got it, we purchased it out of the eighth owner out of Scottsdale, Arizona, and brought it back to Minnesota. And I contacted actually the chief of the state patrol, okay. the fleet manager of the state patrol, the trooper that actually drove the car on the street, oh my. as well as the uh, the technician that built the car at a company called Road Rescue. Yeah. And so we were able to identify exactly what equipment was in it at the time, okay. where the placement of that was, 
through the Troopers Association and one of their magazines, we found a picture of actually the interior of the vehicle and found out that some of the things were not properly positioned in there. So we gutted out the inside of it, the wiring and everything, yep. purchased the equipment that should be in the vehicle, and then rewired it and um, put it back into service. So as you see it now is as close as it was when it was on the road Wow! Um, to, at that time. And uh, now th th this light up here, if you'd have seen the car driving on the road, this light would not have been up there. Correct. Most of the time, because what, what did they use that for? So that was, it's magnetic, yep. and if they got to an accident scene and they needed more visual, um, the red lights, they would stick that yeah, on so the top. So um, rather than have us tell you where all of the, uh, the different emergency lights are on, mm -hmm. would you turn them on for us? Absolutely. We'll just get them on video. All right, absolutely. Coming down the road, this would have looked like a standard uh, Mustang. Right. Uh, and you, <laughs> the first thing you would have noticed was all the lights going on. Um, that's just really neat that you went to all that trouble to completely get to all, you know, contact all those people and get that authentic equipment in the right place and the position of the car to maintain the history. Yep. Um, uh, so thank you for doing that. You know, it's fun to see a car from, you know, back in those years that's authentically uh, been restored with authentic equipment. So. Awesome. That's kind of what we wanted to do with this is that we're going to actually take it out to car shows and be ambassadors for the Minnesota State Patrol and nice. promoting law enforcement and getting those conversations going with people that wouldn't talk to a cop, you know, yeah. on, on the side. But, you know, now that there's a car involved, they will. So we're really excited about that. Well, Rich, thank you so much for taking your time to show us your, your beautiful car collection, your, your garage, and, and your restored Minnesota State Patrol car. Thanks. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you.